Hey Math1B, I've got a new video for you guys in which I'm going to explain how you were supposed to simplify expressions that um, have, have whole number coefficients inside of them and maybe even some values that come, don't come out to be whole numbers when you do the uh, power divided by root rule that we talked about it back in 8.5. So, uh, the good news is if you recognized what you were supposed to do with the previous five lessons in this chapter, this is a very, very short step forward with it, okay? So number one, we learned in 8.5 that if it is a blank root, you have to assume that it's a square root, okay? And that all your variables inside can be reduced by just dividing the power in fact, the little exponent here by the root. So 12 divided by 2, 9 divided by 2, uh, 6 divided by 2. And those should give you the values of the variables outside of the root. So you've got a root with 6, 4 and a half, and then 3. Now here's the thing. These two are checked off, no problem except a mixed number for an exponent is really kind of wonky. So here's what we got to do. What we have to do is we got to think to ourselves, what does it mean to be y to the four and a half power? And when you think about it, there are nine y's inside of that square root. So what I could do is just expand it. So that's the same as y to the ninth power. Right? And then taking pairs out means that one y is outside. So y to the 1, y to the 2, y to the 3, y to the 4, with one y left over inside of the root. So instead of writing y to the 4 and a half power, you say it's y to the 1, 2, 3, 4 outside with one y left over inside. Okay? So that's the first new concept that you guys have to wrap your mind around is, okay, if this doesn't come out to be a whole number, I got to determine what's happening inside here. And actually one of the shortcuts you can think about is if it's y to the one half, right? Y to the four with that one half left over, think about it as it's y to the one divided by the square root, one divided by two. So, I don't know, you, you'll get used to the whole idea of sometimes there will be leftovers. Usually it's just the numerator of that fraction that tells you how many of that variable are inside the root, okay? Now, how do we deal with this square root 80? Same way we've dealt with it in the past. Root 80 can be broken down using a factor tree. So root 80 is the same as root 2 times 40, 2 times 20, 2 times 10, and 2 times 5, if you break it down factor tree style. Okay? Then what you do is you say, I get a pair of 2's in the root to come out. Yeah? I get a second pair of 2's in the root to also come out. And 2 times 2 is just 4. And then the 5 is inside the root. Now, if you're watching this YouTube video and you're not in my class right now, keep in mind that for now I'm ignoring this idea that if it's an even root and comes out to be an odd power, then you need to include absolute value bars. We're not ready for that yet, okay? So, other YouTubers, chill out on that. All right, number two. So this is an acceptable final answer for now. Number two, the only thing that changes with this example is the fact that we are taking the third root or the cube root instead of the square root, which means you are finding triples, three of a kinds instead of pairs. So I can do the thing where a to the 18 just gets divided by 3. I do the thing where y to the 14 gets divided by 3. And then I want to simplify 648 
by breaking it down with the factor tree and then taking out three of the kinds. So, factor tree, and again, you can use your calculator to break this down. You cut it in half because it's even, that's 324. You cut that in half because it's even, and that gives you 162. You cut that in half because it's even, and you get 81. And then 81 no longer divides 2, so you think of the next prime number, 3. 3 times 27 gives you 81. And then 27 is 9 times 3. And then 9 is 3 times 3. So this roots matches how many of one number are necessary to create one on the outside of the root. So I have a 2 on the outside of the cube root. I have a 3 on the outside of the cube root. And then I got a little 3 left over that goes inside the root. So remember, this was the cube root of 648. This whole thing is the cube root just like we saw it before. It's just a different way to represent 648. So that little 3 that didn't have a, didn't have a triplet set, right? That stays underneath the root. Then we check this out. 18 over 3 is just 6, which means we can put the entire a value on the outside of the root. No more a's left over inside of the root. However, with the, with the y, y ends up being 4 and 2 thirds because 14 divided by 3 is 4 and 2 thirds. That means that y to the fourth power is going to go outside. And then if we have y to the th two thirds left over from that, we got two thirds left over, that means you would have y squared inside of the root because two divided by three would give us the y to the two thirds. And we're basically done. Just take two times three and call it six. My next example, I just want to iron out how you actually take a, uh, a rooted term that has a constant in front, a coefficient, and how do we multiply those? Well, I first want to highlight the fact that the black and the red are two completely different types of numbers that you can't just glob together. You can't combine them through multiplication as they are. I can't take 5 times root 20 and somehow come up with root 100. That doesn't work. But what I can do is I can use the commutative property to flip these around. And I can take 5 times 8. That's 40. And if the roots match each other, so it's a square root here and a square root there, I can actually multiply the numbers inside the roots. So it'd be 20 times 15, which is root 300. Yeah. Sorry, the red's not showing up so well on the camera. At any rate, take the red root and reduce it. Find what factors can come out. Now we're back to square roots, so you're only taking out pairs, not triples. So off to the side. 300 is double 150. 150 is double 75. 75, no more twos, but it can divide three. It's 25. And then five times five. So again, I do this really fast in the video because of time purposes. Use a calculator if you can't do this all in your head. A pair of twos comes out. A pair of fives comes out. 
three stays. And then the 40 is still outside there. Don't forget about the 40. So it's 40 times 10, which is just going to be 400. All right, let's see what that looks like if we add variables inside. So we've got 2 root 40a squared b to the 7 times, no coefficient for the second one, root 5a to the 9b to the 8. So the roots are matched. They're both square roots. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply 40 times 5, which is 200. And then we've got we to go back to some properties that we talked about first semester. How do I take a to the 2 times a to the 9? All right? right now, there's, there's a to the 2 times a to the 9 underneath the root now and b to the 7 times b to the 8 underneath the root. Well, if I expanded a squared and a to the 9 out, what I mean by expanded is this is just a times a, and this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different a's right there. Well, if I just counted them up, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Remember, if you're multiplying exponents, no, multiplying powers of same bases, you just add the exponents together. So this is really 2 root 200 a to the 11, because you add them together, and then b to the 7 plus 8, 15. And then we can do the process as we did before. And now it looks very similar to number one or two at the top of this notes document. So what do I do? I check out the 200, see what it can break down to. I check out a to the 11 square roots. 11 divided by 2 is going to talk to me about my powers. b is going to be to the 15 divided by 2. And then we go from there. So 200 is 2 times 100, which is 2 times 50, which is 2 times 25, which is 5 times 5. Which means a pair of 2s comes out, a pair of 5s comes out. There already was a 2 out there. 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half, which means 8 of the 5 comes out. with one A left over inside the root. B to the 15 over 2, that's, that's B to the 7 and a half, which means 7 comes out. The 1 half means that there's one B inside. And then the little 2 that didn't get a partner left inside as well. Then just take 2 times 2, which is 4, times 5, which is 20. So it's 20 A to the 5, B to the 7, root 2 AB. And again, I'm ignoring the absolute value. Those of you who are not in my Math 1B class, I'm ignoring it for now. I have reasons, trust me. All right, last one, number five. I want you guys to try this one on your own. Pause the video and see if you can do everything that we've talked about with a cube root. So pause the video. All right, let's see what you got. So what I got to do is I got to take 4 times 2 because those are the outside quantities, okay? This little 3 is not an exponent for the 4. This little 3 is not an exponent for the 2. They are representations of the actual root themselves. So 4 times 2 is 8. And then we're taking the cube root of 72 times 12, which I don't have that memorized. Let's see, 720 plus, I think it's 864 though. 
So 864 is 72 times 12. A to the 7 times A to the 2, add those exponents, it's going to be X to the 9. Y to the 9 times Y to the 2 is going to be 9 plus 2, which is Y to the 11. All right, so I can break down 864 into 2 times 432. Break that into 2 times 216. Break that into 2 times 108. Sorry, I'm struggling to speak right now. Half of that is 54. Half of that is 27. No more halves, so divide it by 3. Divide that by 3. We've got a bunch of prime numbers here now to work with. So I'm looking for triplets, okay? Three of a kind. So I got a, I got a trio of twos. I've got a trio of threes, which means you're going to put a two on the outside. You're going to put a three on the outside. You've got an eight waiting for you on the outside. Okay, there is two times two left inside of the cube root. So there's still a, there's still a two times two. There's going to be four right here. Yeah. Yeah, then just check out, check out this by saying it's, it's 9 divided by 3. That's x cubed. And that's exactly 3, so no x's are left over in the root. 11 divided by 3 is our new y power, which gives us 3, 6, 9. It goes into it 3 times. with two leftovers. So it's, it's y to the 3 on the outside with two leftovers inside, y squared. Okay. So our final answer, 8 times 2 times 3 is 48, x cubed, y cubed, times the cube root of 4y squared. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, this, is, this is very abstract, very number sensey. I know not a lot of applications right now, but, you know, just keep shining on. Keep, keep fighting the good fight. Keep the stam stamina up for these math problems. And, uh, yeah. Good luck with the homework. <laughs>